In this video, we're looking at re-entry tachycardias. We will begin by looking at the re-entry mechanism. Then we'll break down the difference between a local and a global re-entry tachycardia. And lastly, we'll look at AVRT versus AVNRTs. Let's begin by looking at the criteria for the re-entry mechanism. The first criteria is that we have a loop in the conduction system, as shown by the illustration. But if all we have is a loop, then the action potential will split up and travel through the loop and meet at the halfway point and cancel each other out. And this is because the tissues of both sides of the loop is repolarized, shown here in red. So if we only have a loop, then there won't be a re-entry. What is also needed for the re-entry mechanism to arise is a blockage in the loop that only allows the spreading of the action potential to go through one way. This is shown here in blue. And if this is the case, then the action potential will travel through the loop and re-excite the tissue at the top. But the tissue, of course, needs to be in a repolarized state. So let's take a look at this in a more practical example. Here we see a re-entry loop that connects the ventricle with the atrium again. And as I told you before, when the action potential reaches the connection of the loop, the tissue needs to be in a repolarized state to be able to be depolarized again and thereby allowing the action potential to continue. But let's say, for example, that the action potential travels too fast through the loop and the tissue at the other end has not been repolarized yet. Then the action potential cannot continue and there is no re entry. And so that is the last criteria for the re entry mechanism. Now, moving on, we will take a look at global versus local re entry tachycardias. As you probably already know, the action potential starts at the sinus node in the atrium, travels to the AV node, and then through the His bundle down into the ventricles. Here we see a re entry loop between the sinus node and the AV node in the atrium. And if the loop only involves one chamber of the heart, then it's called a local re entry. And in this case, since it involves the atrium, it's known as a supraventricular tachycardia. And in the same way, there can exist a local re-entry in the ventricle. And this gives rise to a ventricular tachycardia. And if the loop involves multiple chambers, then it's defined as a global re-entry tachycardia. Now, lastly, we'll take a look at AVRT and AVNRT. And we will begin with AVNRT which stands for AV nodal reentry tachycardia. And the definition of this is that the reentry loop involves the AV node. It can either be local if it only involves the atrium, as shown here, or it can also be global if it involves the ventricle as well. Now moving on to AVRT or atrioventricular reentry tachycardia. This is defined as a reentry loop that involves the atrium and the ventricle, but not the AV node. And a typical example of this is the bundle of Kent, which gives rise to the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. And depending on how the action potential travels through this loop, we can have an orthograde AVRT, shown here, with a clockwise conduction. Or we could also have a retrograde AVRT if the, if the action potential travels in this anti-clockwise way. And that covers everything for this video. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching. And also, please consider joining the Discord server if you'd like to.